Hey guys, so by the end of this video, you will be able to add a moving platform like this into your game where players can go on top of the platform and they will move back and forth with that platform, which is super useful if you're making like an obstacle course um, for an obby or a military training base or something of that nature. Um, yeah, so let's hop right into it. So go ahead and remove the spawn brick from the game. We do not need it. And right click in your world and click insert part and we will get this part here. Now we want to make sure that we're moving the part in the right direction. So we can right click our part and click show orientation indicator. So what this will show us is that this part is facing to the left and it's up arrows pointing up. So we know that the front of the part is this way. So we know that when we tell the brick to go forwards, it will go in the direction of this F forwards arrow. So let's size our part so we can have players. Uh, you know, being able to go onto the platform. So this is probably a good size here. And okay, next let's add a, a script to our part. So just hover over here. You can either right click and click uh, insert object, and then click script, and that will get your script in your part. So the first thing we want to do is, um, we're, so we're going to go like the more traditional approach on what you guys think we should be doing, and then we're going to see what the issue with that is and what we can do to fix it. So typically what a lot of people think is that, no, we should be using tween servers to move the parts back and forth. So let's get tween servers in here. So we'll create a variable and get tween service in. So get service, uh, tween service. So now that we have tween service in here, we can create our tween. So what do we need for a tween? We need our instance. So in this case, we'll call it a part, and that will just be equal to script.parent. Now this is script.parent because our script is within the part that we want. So when we say script.parent, we are referring to this part, which is this part here in the workspace. We also need the tween info. So we will call that tween info. So how do we want this? How do we want our tween to look is what this talks about. So we want our tween to take two seconds, we want to have an easing style of cubic, and we want it to have an easing direction of in out. And we also want it to repeat forever. So here in the repeat parameter, we will just put negative one, which will make it run forever. And we want it to reverse itself once it reaches the end. So what this will do is uh, it will move our part back and forth, um, uh, for, it would take two seconds to go forward, two seconds to come back. This is the style and direction that it will have. And that just refers to the way that the animation looks itself. So you can play around with this, with this cubic if you want and this in and out if you want as well. Negative one just means our, our animation will play forever. And true here just means that our animation will reverse itself when it gets to the end. So when it gets to the front, it will also come back. So let's go ahead and create this tween. So local tween. And then with the tween service, we can call the create function. We can pass in our part, pass in our tween info. And now we can tell it what we want to animate. So in this case, we want to animate its C frame. And we want to move, in this example, we want to move our part C frame 10 studs to the front. So we will reference our part dot C frame value. Then we will multiply it by a new C frame value where we will move the part 10 studs to the front. Now, when you want to move something to the front in Roblox, you actually have to use a negative number. So this negative 10 means 10 to the front. Um, so what's going to happen now with our animation and when we play it is that our part will move 10 to the front and 10 to the back. And the player animation here, we can just call the play function on our animation. So now let's come back to our world here. Uh, we want to make sure that our brick is also anchored. Um, so over here in your your properties panel, make sure that the anchored property is selected. And that'll just make it so that we don't get weird physics things when we test our game. So up here, um, click this little arrow and then click the run button. And now we will see our parts animation where it's moving back and forth. So two seconds to get there, two seconds to come back, which is what we want. Now, if we actually hop into the world here um, by clicking play here in our testing thing, we'll see that we have an issue where our player won't actually be moving with our platform. Um, now we can actually solve this fairly easily though, um, using the run service. So 
what we're going to do is we're going to uh, update our part's velocity every frame. So we're going to be using the, the built-in Roblox physics to update the part's velocity every frame, which will move any character that's on top of that part with the part. So yeah, so let's get sorted. So first we need to import the run service. So we can just copy and paste the previous line and then get the run service in here. And um, right after our tween play line, we can connect um, to the run service stepped um, event, which will run every time the game updates the physics of our um, of our world. So every time there's a physics update in our world, this um, function here will run. And so what we want to do is we want to to use a simple physics equation, um, which is uh, velocity equals distance over time. So that's the equation we're going to use to set the velocity of our part. Um, so how are we going to get the distance? Well, we need to be able to see where our part was in the last frame and where it is in this frame. So we need a variable here, um, local last position, and we can set that to the part's current position. And then in here, we will need the part's current position for this frame, and we can declare it like that. Now to get the distance, or in this case, we're going to call it delta position, which just means the change in position. We can write a simple variable here, delta position. And what we're going to do is we're just going to subtract the two, to the two vectors from each other, the two positions from each other. So we're going to subtract the two uh, positions from each other. So now we have our delta position, which is also going to be our distance um, parameter here for our velocity equation. So let's write it out here. So we have velocity, so local velocity equals delta position over, and in this case, we're gonna call it delta time. Now, how do we get this delta time? So this stepped um, event here with the run service, it actually gives us that delta time within this function here. So um, stepped gives us two, uh, two arguments to this function here. Um, you know, we have the total time, the total runtime, and the delta time. So we don't need the total runtime, we just need the delta time. So we're gonna put an underscore here to ignore the first one, the first parameter here. And then we're gonna just take the delta time and use that in our equation. So now that we have this, all, all that's left is setting the parts um, assembly linear velocity to be our velocity and updating our last position to be our current position so that when we come to the next frame, it will work as expected. So now that we have that all written out, when we come back into our game and test with our brick, when we stand on top of our brick, we will now be moving with our brick. And it's that straightforward. So you can now add this to, to any obstacle course that you have, um, um, any military training base that you have where you need a moving platform. Um, and yeah, so if you want the assets for this, uh, for this project, make sure you check the description because we will have the assets located in there. Um, so you can just download that and put it right into your game. Uh, if you have any questions, check out our Discord server um, or ask them in the comments and we will get back to you. Make sure you give this video a thumbs up and subscribe if you want more content like this. And have fun making your games.